Hi, I'm just going to go over some basics with uh, Painter. Um, I know a lot of people have been wondering how to use it. Uh, I'm not the best in the world, but I can at least give you a start starting point. Um, one of the most heavily used brushes by most Painter artists tends to be the... Uh, this is a brush from uh, Painter, I believe Painter 6. Let me go ahead and check that. Yes, Painter 6. Um, I believe you're able to get Painter 6 brushes off the Painter website if you don't have them on your computer. Um, I, I suggest them over the brushes that come with Painter 9. A lot of the brushes that come with Painter 9 are very difficult to use, um, at least from my experience. Uh, so the uh, Smeary Round Brush tends to be the one that's used the most often. You're going to want to go into brush controls, show general, and um, you want your uh, dab type to be circular, and that's that's one of the big key things with it. That's how, part of how you're getting that uh, painterly look without getting these little tiny bristles everywhere that uh, tends to happen if you just have it on the camel hair. Um, one of the really nice things about Painter 9 is it's got this little color mixer. However, if you don't have that, what you can do is open a new file. I'd say give it only 100 or 200 pixels. I'm going to do 200 because I have a pretty high resolution. Well, not at the moment, but uh, that's because this program doesn't, the uh, recording program doesn't let me use too high of a resolution. It gets really laggy if I do. Um, but you can use that as your color mixer instead. And just, you know, treat it pretty much the same way as uh, you would this one. You just go in and dab down colors and mix them and play with them and then just use the eyedropper to pick them up so you can use them in the main window. Um, I actually don't use Painter as much as I was, but that's only because I'm currently experimenting with a new workflow. So I'm, I'm a little rusty with it, so I'm, I'm a little slow at picking a few things up here and there. But you know, generally, don't try to. Uh, if it's your first time using it, don't try to work on anything serious in it. Just scribble, mess around. If you get too serious with it, you're probably just going to end up getting frustrated because you're trying to work on something you actually care about, and it's not coming out the way you want it to. Uh, whereas if you just go in and screw around, you're going to learn how the program works. But, you know, if you mess up, it's just kind of an oh well thing instead of uh, hating the program or anything like that. Um... Uh, currently, I don't have anything clean that I've worked on in Painter that I can load up. So I'm probably just going to avoid bringing anything like that up. However, I will go over one little thing that uh, I notice some people ask, and that's getting clean edges after you're done painting something. It's like, say, you just made this big blob but you wanted it to be a perfect sphere. You'd come in, you know, do your shading. Don't worry about all this excess blob on the outside yet. 
kind of work in your sphere shape. Um, you know, this is, I don't know why it's doing this. Um, right now it keeps uh, setting whatever color I pick up as the background color instead of the foreground color. It shouldn't be doing that on your copy, just to let you know. Mine's just misbehaving at the moment. Um, a nice little trick that a lot of people don't know is you can use the square brackets to up or down the brush size and it can be a lot faster than trying to screw around with it in uh, the brush settings or up here or whatever. It also is more visual than their size system because the size system in Painter frankly just doesn't seem to make much sense. Anyway, I'm not going to worry about it looking perfect. I'm Basically, what you do is then you just go back in and you paint around what you painted. Hopefully less sloppy than I'm doing it right now. And uh, I'm actually cutting off more than I normally would. So you kind of want to keep that um, left some of the leftover uh, dark outside color along your edges. And it just helps to define the shape a little bit more. Um, you can also, if you find a better way to do that, go ahead. You know, I that's just what I do. But pretty much all you're doing is erasing around the object with the paintbrush versus using something like an eraser, which has a really hard line and it helps you keep your painterly look but you know lets you get your shape in there um, another really nice thing about painter not everybody knows is if you hold uh, you know space Photoshop has that as well. It lets you move it around. However, if you hold Alt then after, you can rotate. So it's per first press space, then hold Alt, and then you can rotate your canvas. And then to um, get it back to where it was originally, just tap on it once. Um, that also works for the space bar. Holding that down, you tap it a single time, and it'll center the image. Um, that's pretty much all I'm going to go over right now, because this isn't just you know, this isn't really a serious tutorial, it's just some nice little basics to help people start thinking about how to use the program and getting started.